Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Hello and welcome to Hello Self Podcast. I am your host, Patricia Leonard. And those of you who have tuned in to our podcast before, you know that our mission is about helping you take those dreams and goals off your someday shelf and turning your can'ts into cans and your dreams into plans. These last few podcasts that I have done personally, normally I interview individuals, but I have decided that I'm going to present a few, and this happens to be on the law of attraction. This is number five in that series, so each of them have had a different focus. What is love attraction? Those of you who watch it, you'll begin to see that each of the podcasts is about the law of attraction, however, with a different focus. The one tonight that I'll be doing is, again, about the law of attraction focused on keys to effective communication specifically for couples. Now, the whole thing is, I first of all, I'm single, and secondly, I'm not an expert on these. However, I've been doing some research and also utilizing my past experiences in relationships as a way to integrate my own feelings in here and those those on doing scientific studies, those who have written books about relationship. So I've collected a lot of different kind of information from a lot of different kind of sources. So again, tonight, it's still the law of attraction specifically focused on keys to effective communication, specifically with couples. Now, you're going to find as I present this, that this may not necessarily be unique to couples. It's simply about, now there will be some focus on that, but it's simply about communication, which most of us are not very good at because we may never have even thought about it. What is communication? And, and we ne- may never have been brought up in a household that really was about communication or where a husband and wife communicated or couples. So I think at least for me, I'm learning a lot myself. And I'm hoping that this helps you turn your cans into cans and your dreams into plans about a healthy, loving relationship. And that's what I'm hoping to get out of here (laughs) in my own life. So let's start. And I've taken a lot of notes uh, down because I want to make sure I cover these things. And specifically, I will be looking at my notes and pulling out and maybe ad-libbing a little, but pulling out some key things that I have uh, uh, gathered through my research. So let's begin. These are keys to effective communication. And you know that it's going to fit across everything, but because the whole thing is, a communication is about more than one person. However, hello self, you can be talking to yourself too. Learn about yourself. That's really what Hello Self is about, is who am I? Who am I? I was asked to be part of a presentation, a little event, and it was letters. We, she said, here's what I want you to do. This event we're calling Letters Never Sent. And so we could write a letter to anybody we wanted, and then we'd share it in this sentation. And it was a little theater that she, uh, that guests came in. So anyway, I said, what am I going to write about? Some wrote it to their dogs. Some wrote to their parents that they were mad at. Some wrote to their bosses. Some wrote to their parents that they loved. 
some wrote to friends. So it was a letter never sent, but written. It's a healthy way to deal with life, too, I can tell you that. But anyway, mine happened to be a letter that I wrote to self. From my spiritual self to my physical self. Because in my whole life, I found that they never partnered up. And the whole thing in the letter, the whole premise of my letter was, why have we not been partners? One time you would go this way and then that way and this way, and then we didn't make decisions. We didn't do anything with our life because, oh, I think you should do this, Patricia, talking to her myself. And then when it got time to do it, I was too afraid. And then I talked myself out of it. I probably wouldn't have been successful anyway. So my letter was from my spiritual self looking at my physical self and how I behaved in my life and how my limiting thoughts had limited my life and kept me in prison. So anyway, that's what started this. And then I had an attraction to somebody that I didn't understand. And I said, you know what? I'm waking up. Who are you, Patricia? So anyway, that's how this series came about. So here we go with keys to effective communication for couples and in relationships in general. They started out this note that I pulled off of the internet. Communication is a fundamental pillar in our relationships, especially romantic relationships. The problem is a lot of things get in between the two parties in a romantic relationship and we end up going apart and still coming together. And it's basically because we don't speak. If we do speak, we're always trying to change the other and we're not listening. We are not practicing anything about effective communication. Effective communication will save a relationship from hours of misunderstanding, disagreement, and conflict. Here are some of the components of effective communication. Let's just think, what is communication anyway? Communication is deceptively simple, and we make it very difficult. Before we discuss what it means to develop effective communication skills, let's first start with the basics. Communication involves a speaker, a listener, and the third thing is information. Healthy communication requires that we are effective as both a speaker and a listener. So it's not just one person talking. It's listening to what the other person has to say. As the speaker, your role is this. We are responsible for introducing or sharing information. This can be verbal or nonverbal. You've said something to somebody and they roll their eyes. How does that make you feel if you're trying to communicate? Or if you sigh, a big sigh, like, oh, no, not here again. And you know you've done it. Whether it's with your spouse or in corporate America or with your children, and it doesn't send a good message. The speaker has a responsibility for introducing or sharing information, verbal or nonverbal. Verbal. As a listener, we must receive and observe the information. So it's paying attention without all these behavioral things. Together, we must process that information. So if someone is speaking, your partner or your friend or the relationship you're in, uh, if you're a couple, then what you're doing is you're not giving all this body language and everything because you don't know yet what the speaker has to say. You haven't heard the information. And as a listener, eye contact, and we'll go into some more of these things. 
But you so you remember there's a speaker and there's a listener and there's information. And our role is to understand that information that the person is expressing and make a conversation out of it or make something that turns out to be a win for both and creates a healthy conversation, a healthy communication relationship. So I want to start out with something that I read, and I thought this was very important because I felt like it's exactly what the trap we fall into. So it's seven communication pitfalls and bad habits. And that's exactly what happens to us. We fall into these habits and we're not a real speaker. We're not a real listener. And we don't even know what the information is we want to share. So we've lost it all around. So here are some pitfalls. And look at yourself in the mirror now. That silent treatment. How many of you have ever given your partner or your relationship or a couple, or you've given them the silent treatment. So individuals within a relationship try to exert, that's what you're doing, exert control to provoke a reaction. You don't want to communicate. All you want to do is create a reaction. This is known as the silent treatment or storm walling. That's exactly what a lot of us fall into doing whether it's our teenager trying to tell us something, we happen to be talking about, I'm going to go into couples more. But these are some of the things that we fall into and we carry it to every aspect of our life. Men generally respond by waving the white flag and surrendering, while women tend to move closer and overly communicate. I remember in corporate America, I had a manager, I had, uh, I love him, he's a, uh, a consultant in New York now. But he said, I was in this meeting and I was coming up with ideas. And he said, Patricia, you have brilliant ideas, but nobody's going to listen to you. He said, that's not the way we process information. Don't give me all of that. It might not be good, but you know what I was talking to? They don't want to know that. He told me, what is it you want to talk about? And he said, no more than three things. These are the key things that I'd like for us to sit down and talk about. Or here are the three things that I've been worried about lately. No more. It can be only one. And I want to get your opinion on it. So he said, give us something to process. And quit telling us all this side stuff that it just confuses things. And we get tired of listening. Oh, brother, here she goes again. And that is true about women. That is true. Most women over, and it's maybe the upbringing, but I can tell you for a fact, I, I was always trying to validate every point I brought up. I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but here's what my thinking is. You've already downplayed the value of what you're going to say. And men don't have time for that. And I don't blame them. I am right there myself now. I'm pretty sassy myself. <laughs> uh, disparaging comments and insults. The last time I wanted to talk to you, you did. We don't need to start there either. That surely doesn't get things going. People often use insults instead of expressing their hurt. You are always putting me down. You are always, it doesn't matter what I say, it's not right. You're always putting, is that a good place to start? No, I'm already mad at you. So it says using disparaging comments and insults as a form of communication is a display of emotional and verbal abuse. And we as women are masters of that. Now, I'm not saying that men don't do these too, because we have, remember, there's the speaker, the listener, and the information. So we have to look at ourselves. When you're speaking, what are you saying and what are you feeling emotionally? And what's the information you're relaying? Is it something you really want an answer to or you just want to put the other person down? Because you want to win. 
that never gives you be, lets you become a winner, and especially in conversations or communications. I'm a career coach by trade. I was in human resources, but then I've uh, been coaching individuals for career. You know what the whole thing is? When you go interview and you're having a conversation, this fits there too. Remember, you're the speaker at that moment. They're the listener and there's information you're relaying. If you just go on and on or you only you act like, why did you ask me that? You could see my resume. If you act like that, you're going to ta- stop the conversation and you won't get what you want. You won't. People don't want to be there. Okay, another aspect of pitfalls is yelling and screaming. Have you ever seen a conversation between a couple that just escalated and escalated? Sometimes it even went into physical abuse. That's what it can do because it triggers behaviors in us that are negative. And so it can go into that and then we wonder why the man or the woman get beat up all the time or why they don't talk. That's the problem. They don't talk because I'm not going to talk because you never listen anyway. Remember, when somebody's talking, you are the listener. And you need to know what is the information they're giving you, and they need to know what is the information they're intending for you. Okay, another one, number four, not asking for what you want or need. You should know we've been married for 30 years or we've been in this relation. I've told you this before. Does this sound like anything you've ever said? (laughs) A closed mouth doesn't get fed. So if you want something, don't scream it and yell it or put the person down to get it. Speak your, speak it. It's the responsibility of you, the speaker. Half listening. You know you've done that. Cell phones are are our greatest distraction now. Yeah, I'm listening. I go out to dinner and I see two people. And the first thing, husband and wife or couples, I don't know. First thing they do is pick up the phone. I was out to dinner by myself at Cracker Barrel one night. And I saw... A family of four come in. Guess what? I watched. I wanted to see what happened. And guess what? Every one of them, they were teenager children. Every one of them had their cell phone out and they weren't saying a thing to each other. I I am, yes, I love my cell phone and I love my computer. It gives me, but you know what? When I go to the gym, I don't take my cell phone in. Somebody says, I've been trying to call you for the last hour. When I'm at the gym, you're not going to get me. That's the whole thing. I don't take my phone in. And if we're out to dinner, I'm not going to be referring to my cell phone all the time. And I don't want you referring to your cell <laughs> But I think we have to talk about those things. I'm not saying we do it to aggravate the other person. We do everything in our life out of habit, sadly. Half listening and what I've got my, I'm listening to you, I'm listening to you, and we're reading the self. (laughs) Oh, my God. You know what? The more I go into this thing about law of attraction and relationships, the more I say, oh, my gosh, we've got a world. And it gets funny, but it's not funny. Because... I don't know, for some reason, something has hit me that love is the answer. And I just, I fall in, it doesn't mean that I'm perfect, but I fall in love with everybody because of some reason. And I've been asking a lot of people, because I call them honey and baby and all this, and they're not babies, they're human beings. But I always say before I leave them, whether it's my family Or I was just talking to a gentleman today for he's going to be on my High Heels Cabaret TV show. It's a variety show. And he's going to be on there singing. And I said, we had a conversation maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And I said, oh, my God, I just love who you are. And I said, 
Now, don't take this the wrong way as I'm making a pass at you. And then I said, maybe you shouldn't take it that way. And we both laughed. But I don't, so much of the time, we have forgotten to say, I love you. And then what happened? Maybe something happened. Somebody had something happen that was catastrophic. Or we, something changed and then you walked away and said, oh my gosh, I forgot to tell my child that, love you, honey, have a great day. Or if I know somebody's going to take a trip, I say, be safe. I love you. It's a natural process of me anymore. And I'm telling you, I don't know where it's, I do know where it's coming from. God is touching my life in special ways. And I love the way I can communicate now without any biases. And it opens up other people. If you will Take the bull by the horn and be a good listener. I promise you that communications will get better. Now, I do like to talk, too. (laughs) Okay, number six is wrong time and place. There's a time and a place, they say, to have certain conversations. And we know that. If a conversation begins in an undesired location... The message is likely to be completely missed as the listener will check out and focus on the inappropriateness instead of the presenting. Remember, we said there's a present, there's a speaker, there's a listener, and there's information. Is this the right time to talk about that information? If it isn't, put your conversation in another area. Put your sharing, your information, excuse me, in another area. Because you know when it's the right time or the right place to have a conversation. I was in the grocery store one day and I heard a couple arguing over groceries. Oh, no, we don't like that. You know, we don't. We didn't eat them the last time. And I don't know why you keep buying that brand of bread or what is it really necessary there. Is it really necessary? Or you're out to dinner and the conversation at the dinner table gets elevated. No, it's not the right place. Drives me crazy when people are having an argument on the cell phone in a public place and they don't even stop to do it. Cell phone is, I even hear this at the gym. It drives me crazy. I always say, I don't, I want to be on a treadmill or working out where there's no, I always want, I always pray before I go in, God, this is my planet fitness. Don't let anybody else in. (laughs) You think I don't? (laughs) Oh my gosh. But I don't want to hear that. I didn't come in here to listen to a fight or something. I came in here to relax and maybe watch some of the news or Kelly Clarkson or something like that. But, and that's not on my cell phone. It's on the TV. Or sometimes I don't listen to anything except the rhythm of my own soul relaxing. Okay, so the wrong time and place. Think about that. You're going to get my attention if we're walking through the grocery store and you're trying to talk about, I told you this and I told you that. No. I don't care. I'm embarrassed. So we have to think, what is the information I really want and to share? And then when is the appropriate place? Okay, this is number seven of the pitfalls. Assumptions. Every conversation should have two sides. And we've already talked about that. Checking with your partner to see if you clearly understand this position and clarify that you clearly understand. Do they understand your position and do you understand mine? So we have to check that out to make sure that their thinking is not going down another way, which is only separating us. This is a form of respect and shows that you are trying to get it right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, And I want to make sure that we're on the same before we take off because otherwise, Somebody's going that way and somebody's going that way. And we don't meet in the middle. 
it's not trying to be right. Uh, the assumptions sometimes make the other person think we're just trying to be right. So we say something without getting how they feel about it or how they see it. So don't assume, get clarity. And that's what it says. Assumptions can only create more pitfalls. Okay, so that's basically covering some of the pitfalls and bad habits. And these are habits we get into. And I'm going to touch on a little bit more about um, how we do that along the way in our lives without even thinking about it. It's just the part of our habits in life that started years ago. So now I want to, I said I'd be talking about effective communication. So this is effective communication skills and strategies. So now it's going into what are some strategies? Now, what we've been talking about is the pitfalls and how we can begin to handle those. And so this goes a little bit deeper into that, I think. Number one, be mindful. Always stay in the moment, good or bad, while examining your actions, thoughts, and words toward your partner. You may be thinking, I never did like the way that he acted with this, or I notice how he always looks at other women, and I never like that. In other words, you're thinking about something else, about you're angry, the anger part of it or whatever. You're not paying attention at all. You're simply taking a side road to beating the crap out of the other person. And it goes the same way for men, They'll, th but it's stay in the moment. What is it that you want to talk about now without bringing up all the bad stuff that happened six months ago? If it is something that you need to talk about, then state that in your initial speaker in of information. I've been letting this build up in me over a number of months, and I'm angry at myself because I'm just now bringing it up. When it feels like I, I, it's so big, it wants to explode inside of me. No, that's what happens. We hold it inside. And we're not even mindful of it till we till one little thing raises our thoughts about it. You know what? I have this has made me mad for months now that you do this. So now you bring it all up, and you're not staying in the moment, and you're not mindful about what you really want to talk about. What you're now going into is what you've been mad about for the last six months. And so it's not going to, it's not going to break any, it's not going to clear anything up because emotions are going to get in it too much. I'm not saying that when you're stating your information, that our emotions are not there, but not blaming emotions, just emotions that come up in yourself, but not blaming because that doesn't take you any place because if you let that go on all this time as a listener. Remember, you're partly responsible for effective communication. So you listened, you watched it, and then you just let it build up and then you pop them in the nose. You know you've done that before. Whether it's with your husband, your boyfriend, your children. This just happens to be focused on couples, but it's all the same thing. Practice active listening, and we've been talking a lot about that. Be present, attentive, and focused when it's time to listen to your partner. You state something. It's your information. You're the speaker then. And then, as a listener, you may ask them, what did you think that I said? And let's talk a little bit more about that. And maybe, how did it make you feel? So you want to get it, they heard it the way you intended and how it made them feel. Because if you're just trying to blame somebody and not taking any responsibility yourself, it's going to touch their heartstrings. And I don't mean their emotional heartstrings that make them sad or feel put down. And that's not what communication is about, is putting somebody down so somebody else can be powerful. Even though you may be told that in our political system in the United States. 
I'm right and you're wrong. Yeah, yeah. Practice active listening. That's number two. Reflective listening is a great way to reassure your partner that you are engaged and listening to what they're saying. For example, I heard you say, I heard you when I heard you when you said, whatever I whenever I don't make eye contact with you, it feels dis- dismissive and you feel less connected. I feel less connected when you're not looking at me in the eye. And I think I said this in my last podcast, but I had somebody who was telling me we were having a conversation in a restaurant and he was telling me about something that was very important to him. And he said, Patricia, I want to acknowledge you for helping me or paying attention to me. And I thought, what are you, what's he talking about? He said, you kept eye contact the whole time. And he must have talked for 35 minutes or so about what he was talking about. Now, we weren't arguing. We were just sharing information. He was the speaker at that time. And he said, you never took your eyes off me. You didn't shake your head. You just focused on my eyes. And he said that the eyes are the window to the soul. And he said, and I felt it. But you know what? I wasn't even smart enough to think about that at the time. It's just that I wanted to know who he is and how he sees what we were talking about. Can you be interested like that? Because that's how we learn from one another. That's how we learn to be partners with one another, not for blaming. Oh, I remember when you said this. No, I heard what you said about such and such. And I don't want us to have that in our relationship. So I will remember that. I will remember that. And I will honor that. So just let the person know that they've been felt and heard without, you know what we do? We constantly interrupt to defend ourselves. Or that we've got something to add. Yeah, I've got some friends. <laughs> been guilty of this. My, believe me, the reason I can relate to all this, I am guilty myself. And I'm trying to change my life. I'm trying to change my behavior specifically. To love. And what love is about is respecting the other person and their thoughts. And things that are important to them. Doesn't mean it's important to you, but you can honor them through what's important to them. And the only way you know that is listening and observing. But no, oh, I I know, Patricia, that's a great thing. Sometimes I'll be telling something that I'm so excited about. The next thing I know, they're telling me, you know what, my uncle and I did this, or I traveled there. It's their story. We don't have time to listen to someone else's story because we're too busy creating our own. That's not effective communication. And that is not showing respect for each other. And let me tell you, those of you who are friends, you know I've been guilty of this. And I'm trying to change. I'm trying to change and be. And his feedback it, I wanted to pat myself on the back. Patricia, you are improving, baby. Keep going. Keep saying hello to self and watching yourself becoming who you are or who you want to be. And all of these things you're putting out for other people, start living them yourself because people will notice. Yeah, I'm a hugger. I remember I went to a corporate, I was doing some consulting with a company in New York. And the woman and I had developed, she was a vice president of this human resource. She was bringing me in to do a workshop. And I remember thinking to myself, wow, we're such good friends on the telephone in just the interaction we've had. And how am I going to meet her? Uh, How am I going to greet her? And so this was a big office and she met me down in the atrium. And then It was really funny. She got off the elevator 
And she said, are you Patricia? And I said, yes, I am. So you must be. And the next thing I knew, we put our hand out, but then we put it back. And guess what we did? We hugged. And I'm a hugger from way back. <laughs> but we hugged. And oh my gosh, everything went fabulous after that. It was just like, sometimes we don't know how to handle relationships. Sometimes we simply surrender and go with the protocol, shake hands or whatever. But other times, something leads us. I was at the gym this week, and I felt this nudge. And that's what I believe in, that spirit gives us nudges, or whoever your higher self is, gives us nudges, and we don't pay any attention. We just go on with our own priorities in life. But I was working out, and I had see, this gentleman has been there. Every time we go in, I see him, and he sees me. But we had never really talked, but we smile at each other and then walk on. I was working on one of the pieces of equipment, and I noticed he was reading that book or reading a book again. And for some reason, I went over and I said, I know you don't know who I am, but I see you here all the time. And he said, I know your name is Patricia. And I said, oh, yes, it is, as a matter of fact. I said, are you an author? And he said, why would you ask that? I said, I noticed that you work out on your equipment and then you stop and read. And then you work out. And I said, some people do all kinds of things, but you read and you're always reading a book. And I just, I don't know why I approached you to tell you the truth, but I think I do now. Uh, and he said, this is wild that you would ask me this. He said, I just finished a book of poetry. And I said, oh, now I know why we're supposed to talk. I have a High Heels Cabaret show and a podcast. And if you're open, I'd love to interview you on my podcast and learn more about what was the Hello Self moment that you decided to write a book of poetry. And then I would like to get you on my High Heels Cabaret TV show and have you perform some of your poetry on there. And I gave him my business card and I said, get in touch and let's talk more. Now, what made me do that? I don't know. But I think when we start to open up to trust ourselves and to feel like love is important, feel like love and uh, paying attention to people, making them important too. It's another aspect of you learning about yourself. And so we talked and then said, thank you so much. I'm glad I stepped up and took the nudge from spirit. And I noticed the book said something about God on the outside. And I said, so you are a godly man? And he said, yes, I am. But this book is not about God. He said, they're using that as a metaphor and in telling their story. I still don't know. It's funny that his name is Christian, too. Isn't that something? But anyway, I don't know. The more we start respecting others and having better relationships with our family, with others, the more life opens up to us. And I can vouch for that. Okay, so practice active listening. Very important. Speak clearly and with clarity. I would love for you to wash the dishes. Don't something like, you, you always put your dishes in the, dish, in the sink and then I have to take them out. Could you put them in a dishwasher? Isn't that something? You all are guilty of that. Come on, don't deny it. You know you are. And you get mad because they don't read your mind. It's funny, I had somebody over for dinner not too long ago. And when the person got up, the very first thing they did was they took their dishes and took them to the sink 
and my dishwasher was is broken. So they washed them, and I went, oh, my God, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That's the things, and not that I'm putting myself on a pedestal, but let people know that you appreciate them. I would love for you to wash the dishes that you use each night to help me save time in the morning. You don't have to take say it's snobbish. You never do anything. You think I'm your slave. You know you've said that before. Or if you haven't said it, you've felt it. Emes- uh, information is relayed through actions, too, not just words. Okay, number four, seek understanding. This is another effective communication strategy. Seek understanding. I want to ask you about your comment when you said, I feel frustrated with you for not responding properly. Can you explain that? So instead of just blaming and getting pissy about it and acting and not talking all night long, you've got family members and you've got friends and you've got spouses and you've got (laughs) that do that. They just do it. We're doing these things out of habit or spite or I'm going to get up one up on them because you're always acting like this. So seek understanding. Find out what really happened before you make the assumptions. I already know he always acts like this or she always acts like this. Use I statements. This is another very impactful one. Using I statements provides both individuals with a level of compassion and reassurance that your partner is taking accountability for their part in the conflict. You're absolutely right, sis. I did. And you're absolutely right, baby. I did say that comment just because I was mad. I was mad at you. I was going to get back at you. Own it. Own it. If you did it and you said it, own it. I should have taken the extra 10 minutes and washed the dishes. Then you would have more time this morning. And frankly, I didn't even think about it. But I can tell you, thank you for sharing this, because in the future, it will help remind me. And it's not always that people want to be adversarial. Sometimes it's just that it's a habit we got into. That's what these things are about. Or it's just uh, that we were preoccupied with something else. Now, if you do it night after night... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you can be preoccupied for the rest of your life just to avoid doing the dishes. <laughs> but I think you're right. I could have helped you more on that, and I didn't. I thought my uh, work on that project I was working on was more important. It'll get done even if I take 10 minutes and help you with something. We do. How many times have we not had time? I know I'm talking about couples. But how many times have we said to our children, Johnny, I'm working on some, a project at work right now. What do you need? Or I'll get back with you. Or I really don't have the time right now. Go talk to your mom or go talk to your dad. No. Someday you might regret. I wish I would have taken the time. I wish I would have taken the time. This is causing me to look back over my life and think about the moments that I wish I could redo. So now I have to do them for others because I missed that chance with someone. And now I'm trying to wake up so that at least the people and the relationships I make in the future, I begin to honor them. I'm so glad I'm waking up. My life is so much richer. And believe me, I got a long way to go. I've been sleeping for a number of years. <laughs> um, but I also am congratulating myself for at least uh, waking up at this moment and doing these kind of workshops because I want to help others. And then secondly, it helps me. Okay, open-ended questions. Some of these things are starting to overlap with the mistakes we make. But open-ended question. Prevent the conversation, but be when you ask something, don't just let it be a yes or no. And this is the same thing in your business relationships 
and in your your family relationships, your love relationships, instead of asking a question of yes or no answer, st- instead say, tell me how you felt about what I just said. You, if you said, did what I just say hurt you or upset you? No, don't ask it like that because they can say yes or no and you still don't have any information. You're trying to seek information. Tell me how that made you feel what I just said to you. And you know what? I was mad and I just wanted to hurt you. So you take responsibility. Remember right up before this, the I statement. And sometimes you just want to hurt them. So you'll make these kind of statements. Own it, Johnny, that wasn't necessary. Or honey, I wish I wouldn't have said that. I am so sorry. I really, I was mad. And I wanted to get even. And I wanted to win in this conversation. Come on, own it. And then you got a chance of having a good, effective communication with your relationship. Validate feelings. Validating feelings and communicating that your partner has been heard can help eliminate the shutting down of feeling unheard. So sometimes we don't feel like the other person hurt us because they don't say anything. For example, here's one about what I heard you say was that you felt alone in the chores around the house because I left the dishes in the sink. Is that right? So you want to clarify and not just assume. Remember, we talked about assumptions a while ago. We just don't assume that what we're thinking is exactly what they're thinking. We need to clarify it. And that gives the speaker and the listener of the information an opportunity to be real partners in this communication. And both of them be winners. Both of them, not one coming out being a winner. For example, and that was with, I could have left the, I didn't have to leave the dishes in the sink. And I heard what you said. Is that right? A focus on the feelings, not the behavior, can evoke change. So folk, how did it make you feel? Not the behavior, but how did that, can it evoke change? And that's what we're trying to do. So these are some of the things that I wanted to really highlight here. And because these are things that help effective communication between partners. And there's a, I could repeat that. And I might just do a little bit about that. But effective techniques for communication for couples. And based upon what all we've said, the very first one here is show respect for your partner. And I think that's what we've been talking about here. Show respect. Own your own feelings. This is just highlighting what we've been talking about. If you feel this way and you acted this way, own it. Switch off external distractors and anything that's making you not pay attention. We've talked about that, whether it be cell phone, TV, or just sitting there not paying attention and not interacting, not giving eye contact. The fourth one, be kind. Kindness in a relationship goes a long way. If things are tense, don't fight. Look for opportunities to be kind. Go over and Hug them. I like I said, I'm a hugger. Sometimes they don't want you to hug them, but normally it will work. Or you can say, I'm sorry. You know what? I had a bad day and I'm taking it out on you. Or when you didn't do the dishes, I got mad this morning and I'm still carrying it. And I I don't want to carry that anymore because I really love you. Set a time side to talk. Set aside times to talk. So don't just make intercommunication a thing that we do once a month. Maybe you go out to dinner together. Or I love, this is something I love, going for a walk, being out with the trees and the birds where there are no distractions but the feet. <laughs> and I love holding hands. I am a hand holder too. So 
just the going sit, going to the couch and sitting down by your partner for no reason. Just sitting there. My niece is adopting a little girl. And I know she was, I was visiting the first time I met her. And I was sitting on the couch by my brother. And I was keeping my distance from her because I didn't want to scare her. The next thing I knew, she came up and sat down beside me. Give a person space to show their love and affection. And I love her. I love her. She is the, she is a gift from God. So I, I think, yeah, give people space and be kind, set aside time to just focus on them. They matter. Yeah, we think we're the only one that matters a lot of time. Take turns stating your feeling. Okay, this is our monthly event. Here we go. Let's go for a walk. Okay, now what we're going to do, if it's a, it could be a game, we're going to take turns talking about the feelings that we've had for the last month that we bottled up inside of us. It could be good feelings, too, that you could share. <laughs> so. We just set a time aside to open up and talk. People are in a hurry to get things done. They rush and life's no fun. Tell life's no fun. And we don't give relationships anything. Oh, yeah, I got to go, Johnny. See you. Mwah, mwah. And he does the same thing. Goes out the door. Bye, honey. See you tonight. No. I know we're in a hurry, and I know there's a lot we have to get done. Putting a text message out in the middle of the day, honey, just thinking about you. Oh my goodness, it makes you feel like a million dollars. Or putting a note in the lunchbox of your child or your lover or your friend or your husband. It doesn't cost a million dollars to do something like that, and it can mean so much. It can mean so much. Appreciate the effort they make. Don't forget a little word like thanks. Thanks. I really appreciate that. Get in the habit of focusing on the positive things that they are doing. We tend to, as a speaker, we tend to share information about, oh, what we don't like. What if you turned that around? You know, when you're driving down the road and somebody cuts you off. Okay. I told God I wasn't going to do that anymore. But every once in a while, I still get mad. And then I say, oh, God, I said I wasn't going to do that anymore. Cancel, cancel, cancel. I don't want that going out into the universe. I'm trying to change. And I don't even know the driver. But we do that in our own households with our family. How sad. Or with the person we love, the couple. You're in love with this person, and yet you fail to show it. You fail to show it. If you had a fight and they extended an olive branch, take it. Don't say, oh, yeah. Or sit on your couch and just sit there in your own corner and not speak. I'm showing my control over you by not reacting. How many of you have done that? Mm -hmm. I hope you start looking at yourself because it's made me look at myself. And I don't want to leave this by myself. <laughs> okay. And, uh, number eight, learn to negotiate. Th these are some, co we've talked about the detail of this, but these are some things that create Effective communication for couples. Learn to negotiate. Meet in the middle. Okay. How can we meet in the middle? Because we're, we're on both ends of the spectrum. But I know there's a middle ground someplace between us. And so start and let your partner. Here's something we could do. And then... Yeah, I was thinking about this. 
And then once you've got some options, information out there as a speaker and a listener, you say, okay, let's do this for this time. You want to? And that'll get us through this moment. And then we can always talk about how we meet in the middle in the future, because that keeps arguments from happening. Because what we want to do is get in our corner and start fighting. Yeah. I'd rather love than fight. <laughs> Leave the past in the past. We've been talking about that too. What we do is we bring up all this. You remember last year when you said that, or last year. I remember when you did, you bottled it up, and now it's popping out because something triggered you. <laughs> oh, come on. All of you are guilty. And so am I. <laughs> Even a note or a text man uh, matters. And remember, that's what I said. Let the person know that you love them and that you're thinking of them. Even if you had a, a little bit of a heated discussion last night, don't let it carry on. Let it go. Didn't Frozen tell us that, the movie? Let it go. <laughs> we get all of these nudges in life but yet oh at that moment we remember or we don't think how it fits in our life it was a movie it was a little princess girl <laughs> no there are that's one thing that i am really learning a lot about is that there are messages in everything and i believe that words are dead anymore we can say i love you and it doesn't mean anything because we don't demonstrate it. So I am a firm believer that what is going to help turn our society around is the arts. Shakespeare taught about life in all of his work, from sonnets, from theater. He taught about life through the theater, through artistic expression. Because you know what? Words only touch the mind, basically, the mental. But yet we're a mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual being. And most of us haven't even gotten in touch with anything, not even any of them. But I think that arts is the way to get, whether it's a song, you know how a song can touch your heart, make you cry, or a poem. Or a reading of a chapter in a book. Or just a line up on a marquee as you're driving down the road. Oh my gosh, it says something to you. Hello self moments happen from a lot of this stuff. And I think that if we pay attention, we can improve our relationships and how couples interact and how they make their lives the most valuable thing as a couple that they've ever experienced because that's what real love is about. It's not the words. It's about the experience without all of our biases thrown in there. Okay, the final takeaway here is effective communications for couples isn't a one-time thing. It's an ongoing process of learning to communicate more clearly and express yourself while listening to your partner's thoughts and needs. Weave these relationships or marriage communication exercises into your daily life and your bond will definitely benefit. So just remember these basic things that we've been talking about tonight. You already knew them. You already have experienced them. But you know what? Every once in a while, a reminder is very important. And a look at ourselves. Hello, self. Who are you? How have you been making this relationship a more effective relationship through your communication or your lack of? 
And this is something that I really think that it takes us all back to the beginning. And it, they had it. I don't know if I put this down or if I saw it in, in my research. But from the age of two, people start earnestly practicing the skill of perf- uh, persuasion and debate. The age of two. If you think about it, of course, our earliest oral arguments are typically sentences of just a single word or two. Hearing the plaintiff, no, or the emphatic, mine, issued at full volume by a toddler can be quite jarring in its intensity and passion. Now, you know yourself that if you've been around children, you've heard that, even if you're in the grocery store, no, I want that. So that's where they start their communication. And if it gets them something, guess what? Unfortunately, some of us grow up in homes where we learn that a loud voice and unshaking commitment to a position can win the war. You start screaming and yelling and the mom will say, oh, just give him that. Or the dad will say, no, no, um, oh, no. And he can't control the child. And the child just screams and rolls and beats his head on the floor. Some children are more willing to hold their breath, scares the parents to death, until they turn blue. Parents fret and give in to keep the peace. So this is where it all starts. So I'm not blaming myself or anybody else, but think about your home life. Other children grow up in homes where their opinions and desires are given no consideration, and they take the position of one up, one down as adults. You're a child. You don't have anything to contribute to this. And we start that practice, and we carry it on through life. And you've seen this. Parents don't want to be bothered with it because they don't want the noise in the restaurant. Take that child outside. I remember my son used to lay at my feet because we'd have, I'd be out with somebody and we'd have conversations. And he got bored. Two years old, 17 months old. And I'd have a blanket on the floor and he'd lay. (laughs) There's all kinds of ways to manage this or he would have a toy and or I would take a coloring book but you know what there is no room for that behavior to start because it never stops in a lot of cases our information that we speak and that we hear is not taking us out of that okay so the moral of this strong communication in the living room Higher sexual satisfaction for on area in couples coaching. It wait, I, I missed a line. Higher communication in the living room, strong communication in the living room equals higher sexual satisfaction in the bedroom. So the conversation can shut down the intimacy of our relationships simply by the way we speak and the way we listen or don't listen. And those all start when we're two years old and we watch our parents. I had somebody say, I never heard my parents say, I love you, to one another. Yeah. One of the most frequently focused on area in couples coaching is communication skills. Does that surprise you? Regardless of your age or the length of your relationship, being able to engage in effective discussions with your partner will probably result in higher relationships and sexual satisfaction. Instead of a slam bam, thank you, ma'am, and then fall off to sleep, maybe it would lead to holding and hugging. What, What is real love? If you don't know how to ask for what you need in life, you are less likely to have your needs met. We just accept that it's a slam, bam, thank you kind of sexual relationship. And maybe that's also 
how our communication relationship is. Slam, bam, thank you, man. I said my part, now I'm out of here. It's easy. It's never too late to enhance your communication skills and increase your chances of being both heard and understood. That is true in careers. I told you I was a career coach by my professional trade. This, that is true in careers, relationships, and in life. You got to know what to ask for. You may not get everything, but remember, we're here about reading in the middle somehow. Okay, I think I've said enough. At this point, I want to wrap up with a love quote, which I did the last time too. And this love quote happens to be from, and they're all, I found this on the internet, and all of these love quotes are written by very famous uh, theologians, inspirational thinkers, and it's from all time, not just from our generation now. So this happens to come from St. Augustine, Roman as African theologian. And here's what he says. It is love that asks, that seeks, that knocks, that finds, and that is faithful to what it finds. Wow. What a consummation of this podcast we've just been talking about. And I have to share something else. I had a cup of tea a while ago. And if you look on some of the tea bags that you get, specifically herbal tea bags, you'll see that there's a little square piece that keeps the tea bag on the side. But it's got, and it's got something on it. It might have the name of the tea or whatever. But in almost every case, there's a little saying on there. And I had discovered this one time before I was going to make a speech and I shared it and somebody said, I have never noticed that before. You see how we miss stuff in life? We don't watch what our partner's telling us. We don't know what, we don't pay attention. Otherwise, we would know these things we're talking about. But anyway, here's the one I found tonight before I started this podcast. He who wants a rose must respect the thorn. Persian proverb. There's always going to be some things that we have to deal with. But if you want a, an effective, loving relationship, there's going to be some bumps in it. But if you don't address those bumps, it never gets better. So you have to take the thorns if you want the rose. So take them without fighting and not listening to the person, but take those. And I thought, wow, that's another great one. And they're all around us if we pay attention. So that's this podcast specifically, number five. And number six, the next in the series, I've already, I, I keep saying I'm going to stop these things, but one leads to another. The next podcast in my Law of Attraction series is on relationship, on relationship is titled, What is Love? What's love got to do with it? Yeah. And so what is love? And yet I wonder if we know the meaning of those words because we say, I love you. What does that really mean? And I think what, I, what I'm learning right now is it means different things. But how does your partner, the relationship you happen to be in, whether it's a marriage or whatever it is, what is behind those words that you quote all the time? Because I think we just quote them and it doesn't mean anything because it's part of our language that we just accept. So what I'm going to do with this, and I've already started it, is talking about what is, what do we mean when we say, I love you? What does that really mean? Now, I know it's going to be different things for different people, but I just want to see what some of the research has said that people have said 
that they use it. Do we just utter conversa- words in conversation and we don't know what it means? We just do it because, oh, it makes the other person feel good or it fills in the real conversation in life and I don't have to talk about the relationship. I love you, honey. Why do you love me? Why? What's that all about? Why did you tell me that? Stay tuned because I'm going to be excited about it myself. It's love. What is love? Thank you so much for being here and sharing or sharing your listening with me. And hopefully this has made a difference. And you and your partner or you and your relationship or you and your family can have a, a deeper conversation. But most of all, it's looking at yourself and saying, who am I? What do I love about me? What do I mean when I say I love you to somebody? So it's really starting with you first in your hello self conversation. So I want to say thank you for being here. And again, I am Patricia Leonard, your podcast host for Hello Self podcast. And as I always say when I close out a podcast, is keep dreaming, keep living your life, and keep learning about self. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you for joining Hello Self today, and may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming.